So you're aiming for growth at a time where emerging markets are facing some turmoil. You're pretty exposed to the emerging world. How painful are some of these currency crashes going to be? Well, they, it, it's kind of normal. Uh, I've spent uh, a lot of time myself in Latin America. I've seen 100, 200 percent devaluations. It's very tough when, in, when you're in the, in the middle of that and, and you need to know, know which steps to take. But two, three years later, it comes back, usually. And so it, it is riding out the storm, I would say, and not to overreact and pull back and say, I'm not staying in this market. Uh, it, and, and since we have a very diverse uh, business, uh, at the moment, uh, the ones we're seeing, the Argentine peso or the Brazilian real or the Turkish lira, they're going to have a, an effect on the business, but it's, it's, it's not going to be substantial and it's not going to affect our outlook for the, for the coming months. Do you see any shifts in consumer behavior in, in some of these countries? Where do you see the biggest changes? Brazil is a big market for us and, and the whole turmoil with the trucker strike and uh, I, I think a little bit this is satisfaction with the government and where we are all going. That's reflected in how the consumer feels about buying their day-to-day -day, uh, products. So we do see some effect from that. Again, luckily we're in snacking and we're in indulgent products and in healthy products. So we're less affected by that than some, some of the more expensive goods. But yeah, you feel it. And I would say at this moment for us, Brazil is the one that is most to watch. What about China? What are you seeing in consumer behavior and economic patterns there? Well, China is, is big in e-commerce. It's booming. They buy more than anybody else online. Uh, China is, is, uh, is also a, a, a very unique market that we need to adapt to and we need to learn. The big trend there is that the Chinese companies are winning and it's, a, it's the big food companies that are not doing so well. And so we need to learn to adapt to the Chinese consumer. They're proud of what we do. And, and one of the examples that we did, which is got a lot of press, is that we launched uh, an Oreo uh, wasabi and an Oreo spicy chicken. For us, that looks strange. But no, for the I'm Chinese consumer, yeah, you're, you're excited <laughs> to, to, to try it. Uh, but that, that's the thing. We, we need to learn what the local consumer is about. But China itself, in snacking is going to be the biggest uh, growth in the coming years of any market around the world. Do you worry about boycotts of American products or other repercussions of the current trade war that only appears to be escalating between the U.S. and China? Depends on how you look at it. Uh, for us, we, we produce lo largely in the local markets. Uh, we have a network of plants. Most big markets are supplied from within the country. So I hope that will be appreciated that we are producing there and, and using local ingredients. So we don't see too much of an effect at the moment. We don't feel a consumer negativity towards it. Um, I think the risk is a bit more that uh, because of tariffs or barriers that commodities will start to rise, which will lead to inflation, has an effect on the economy, and as a consequence you sell less. That, that could be one of the effects. Do you support the president's efforts to level the playing field as a business trying to grow in China that is being beaten by local companies? I appreciate any country that is trying to do what's best uh, for the country. So um, I, I also believe in free trade. So I, I would prefer that there is an, uh, a solution that does both. Um, but overall, I, I think we want to be as local as we, we can be. We want to be connected to the local consumers. We want to produce in the countries. And so we will support any, any country that is trying to make sure that we, we have local employment and local production. What about the American consumer? What, what are you seeing right now in terms of willingness to spend? We just came off of a great quarter, 4% consumer spending growth. Is that, is that going to continue? I think it is. I think there is a very positive sentiment with the consumer at the moment. We, we clearly see it in our categories. They're accelerating. Uh, biscuits is, is growing quite nicely. Gum, which was an underdeveloped uh, or, or not so well-performing category, is up. Um, so, yeah, I, I think there, there's going to be uh, another good quarter ahead of us. I, I see a lot of uh, positive sentiment, a lot of uh, confidence, and uh, we feel it in ourselves.